In the video today, we're answering a viewer question. Kevin A asks us, why are significant days called red letter days? While it's commonly stated that the practice of marking important dates in red didn't begin until the Middle Ages, in fact, in ancient Rome, red ink was sometimes used on calendars to identify significant dates, as well as occasionally used on important text in documents, with the underlying reason in both cases seemingly being the same as today, to make the text stand out, and in the case of a calendar, marking it a noteworthy day. Through the years, this practice has continued, and in particular with medieval scribes who used red ink in much the same fashion for initial capital letters and certain important words called rubrics in their illuminated manuscripts. As writing became more widespread, others quickly adopted the use of red ink in their writing too, as noted by John Trevisa in Polychron from 1387, where he wrote, We write up capital letters whip red color. Likewise, particularly important days like saints' feasts or one of the holy days were identified on medieval church calendars with the color red. It was first identified in English by William Caxton in The Boak Yif and Yidos from 1490. I'm sorry about my old English pronunciation previously and for this next bit, but it said this, We write yet in our calendars the Hage Festis with... <laughs> that was... it's horrible to read. Papra? Pa 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 We write yet our calendars the Hyg Festis with red letters of color of purple. In 1549, the first book of common prayer included a calendar day with the holy days marked in red, thus sparing use of the phrase. However, the first print reference to something specifically called a red letter day is not seen until 1663, when Edmund Gayton wrote in The Religion of a Physician, the red letter days being the ornament of her year. Using the term in reference to a secular day is first seen in the journals of Madame Knight, in which Sarah Campbell Knight, 1666 to 1727, wrote, their chief red letter day is St. Election, which is annually observed according to charter to choose their governor. Notably, even today in England, there remains an official practice of recognizing certain special days as red letter days, such as the Queen's birthday and some saints' days, at least with its high court. On these days, all high court judges wear scarlet robes, while on ordinary days, only judges here in criminal cases wear the long red garments. And now for some bonus facts. Because the rest of the calendar was written in black ink, ordinary days used to commonly be referred to as black letter days. For example, Tobias Smollett wrote in the Tars of Old England a comedy from 1757, of the month of November she'll have cause to remember as a black letter day all the days of her life. And now for another bonus fact. The legal phrase black letter law, meaning well-established basic principles of law that are no longer up for debate, traces its history to at least 1831 when the US Supreme Court wrote in Jackson and Huntington, it is seldom that a case in our time savors so much of the black letter, but the course of decision in New York renders it unavoidable. Interestingly, the phrase does not derive from black's famous dictionary or the color of the ink. Rather, black letter refers to an old-fashioned form of type that used to be called black letter, but today is known generally as gothic. A formal, difficult-to-read script that, as it was used for all legal printing well into the 18th century, symbolized both the law and the authority of the state. In fact, even though Roman type had been adopted for most English printing due to the Renaissance, legal printers purposely retained their nearly unintelligible Gothic script, at least in part because lawyers liked keeping the fundamentals of the law to themselves. Many attribute the changeover to William Blackstone, who broke with tradition and published his famous commentaries on the laws of England, 1765 to 1769, in Roman type. As the commentaries soon became the go-to treatise for lawyers of the age, it influenced others to begin publishing law books in the far easier to read Roman type as well. This was perhaps not so much because Blackstone was the premier authority on English law, but rather because his book was far easier to decipher than any earlier texts. So I really hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button below and don't forget to subscribe. Also, check out some of our other videos linked to on the screen now. And as always, thank you for watching.